Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television is sponsored by Potash Corp of White Springs. Potash Corp, helping nature provide. Hello everyone and welcome to Perspective. This is a public affairs presentation of Florida Gateway College. My name is Mike McKee and my guests on the program are Lester and Ann McKellum. They represent the Greater Lake City Community Development Corporation. They've got a big event happening this weekend, one of their largest fundraisers of the year. Uh, we're going to talk about that, but we're also going to talk about what they do to help people get into homes here in Lake City and Columbia County. We'll do that when we come back. Don't go away. is a rewarding job. But if your career goals have you looking for more, Florida Gateway College can show you the way. As a nurse, I love to help people, but I wanted to go further. With our Bachelor of Science nursing degree, RNs have the opportunity to increase their career options and income earning potential. Now I've got more choices and the extra money isn't bad. Start your journey today at Florida Gateway College. Welcome back to Perspective on Florida Gateway College Television. Lester and Ann McCallum uh, represent the Greater Lake City Community Development Corporation. They've been on the program a couple times. Welcome back. Welcome Thank back you. to both, you. both of you. Uh, and I wanted to, to, before we get into your big event, which is a black tie affair at the, at the, uh, the fairgrounds, uh, and it's going to be on the 25th of February, yes. which is this <coughs> Friday, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, or have you guys talk a little bit about um, the organization itself. What is it exactly that the Greater Lake City Community Development Corporation do for people? Well, we uh, prepare people for home ownership by getting, their, uh, getting them prepared for a mortgage. Uh, we, we do uh, credit counseling. Uh, we do budget counseling with them in order to get their credit score to where they need to be to, to qualify for a mortgage. Now, is, is the problem been that people can't get into a house because they've done something bad with their credit? Is that a, a lot of what you see? Well, a lot of young people, when they first start out um, in their adult life, they make a few mistakes. Uh, Sometimes they buy something they can't afford, or they buy a car, they buy, they rent a TV, and they let it go back and that kind of have a negative effect on their credit. And when we come together with them, uh, when they get serious about uh, life and about purchasing homes, which is a very expensive uh, venture, that they need some help trying to get their credit repaired to get them to the point where they can actually get a mortgage from a bank. And, and banks are very leery of giving a loan because this, uh, this is a, a, sometimes a 30-year commitment that a bank is also making mm -hmm. with an individual. Uh, certainly, certainly. And I, you can't blame the bank for not wanting to have a good creditor like somebody, an uh, A-rated credit individual. Most of our people are, uh, when they start out, they're around 550 or 600 credit scores. So the bank needs to know that these people are uh, mentally qualified uh, and capable of assuming that responsibility. So when they come to our program, we make sure that we train them in our financial literacy training. We train them uh, to assume that responsibility and, uh, and to know that's the biggest purchase they're going to ever make in their lives. And we, along with the bank, expect for them to be good stewards of the uh, money that they borrow from the bank. Now, and when you, do you do any of the counseling or do you, do you talk to people? What, is there a big thing that they didn't know they, they get? They have this lo, the little yeah. aha moment where they <laughs> think, oh, uh, what, yeah. what do you see? Biggest of it is uh, they don't realize that paying their bills off or either paying them on time mm -hmm. uh, is as important as, you know, just once you get that product, you are expected to make that payment or you're expected to pay it off, not just ignore it if something happens in your life. Yeah. You know, you just, it don't just go away. And so when they look at it, they say, well, you know, I, something happened and, 
you know, I, I didn't pay it or, you know, mm -hmm. and they think, well, okay, it's done with, but then it, over the years it comes back to haunt you when you get ready to do something serious. So what, what you're saying is if you're late or you, you Don't something pay. happens, mm -hmm. that stays with you forever or? Pretty much, uh, it, for the most part, nine years, seven to nine years, um, sometimes you're able to bounce back. You know, there are other programs that are offered that, you know, kind of give you a second chance. And now, what, what do you suggest people do when, when, you're, when you're counseling them and they, they've, they've been late a couple times or, and, and that's probably what it is, because if they, if they, if they mm -hmm. didn't pay, they yeah. would have whatever they own taken back or mm -hmm. repossessed. Certainly. Uh, but how do, you, how do you make the creditors know that, hey, I've changed and I'm doing something to, to correct my credit score? Well, we kind of direct them to start afresh with something that to help rebuild, you know, start off with a small purchase and pay that on, you know, consistent. And then after a while, you know, pick up something else and they rebuild in their, their steps as they go. Mm -hmm. And they're able to, you know, they look back and say, well, okay, for the last three or four years, you've been, you've done much better <coughs> at it than you did before. So, and then we try to discourage them from filing bankruptcy and how bad know, how bad does bankruptcy hurt your i mean does it take a longer time to recover from a bankruptcy it does it, it, it's, it's easy it's well, easy to know. file yeah but and it's hard so to bounce back from it how do yeah. you discourage someone because that is the, normally the easy way out is to but but your credit is you're going to be it's renting damaged. houses for <clears throat> probably the rest of your life if you do that yeah well you know credit bad credit affects your, empl your employability as well. Uh, my advice to them is if you owe somebody, if you know you have a debt out there, uh, pay it. Make a way in your budget to make that debt good. Uh, that's the surest way that you can uh, accomplish establishing a good credit record or having your, your, ca your character repaired is to pay what you owe. So this is what we do. Now you say that employer, do employers look at credit scores? They do, oh, yes. certainly, certainly. And, yeah. and what, what is the, what the bells and whistles go off when you see that? Because you, you, uh, you want an employee who's going to do the right yeah, thing, yeah. and I think that's what they're probably well, looking at. I think at. most of the employers look at that and they say, well, this guy is, you know, he's, he, he's several people that he owe, he haven't paid be a long time. Can I trust him around my product that he won't, won't start to, to steal or whatever? I think that's in the back of the employer's mind uh, when they look at a new employee. You know, if you got a good credit score, that means you should be a, a trustworthy individual. You want to, you haven't been stealing to pay the bill that you know that you owe to try to get you know some revenue. So that's one of the things I think that um, employers look at. Let me ask you: um, <clears throat> this repairing your credit score is not an easy overnight. <clears throat> Thing, no, it's correct. Not, no. Talk about because I, I think there may be in in our society now we're all about finding out about things as quickly as we can. Yes. And, uh, you know, we mm -hmm. we're, instant gratification is a lot of what our society has become. It's do, they, do they go, do some of your clients that that want to repair their credit go in with that with that thought process that it's going to happen yes. overnight? Yes, they do, and some of them get taken in by people that's offering to help them repair their credit. For a fee, uh, you get uh, propositions from people who say, "Well, I'll help you repair your credit in uh, in 30 days. We'll bring your score up to 700." Mm -hmm. And it's all a myth, you know. It's a scam. To repair credit, it takes time. Uh, now, takes talk about talk, and I talk about the, the fly-by-night people that are taking their money. Well, the, uh, the, when, at what point do you discover that? Oh, I probably wasted money doing this. Well, most of them are taken in because they, they want to believe what they're being told. Uh, somebody tell you, well, I can move your credit from 400 to 700 in 30 to 60 days. Wow, you know, all of a sudden, you know, that's something that you don't have to do. Uh, it's, and it sounds so easy that you get awfully get taken in by that. And you pay extraordinary amounts of money, money that you could be redirected towards a legitimate bill yourself. After you pull your credit, you can find out what's on your credit, and then you can um, make plans to, to correct those issues by paying these people off. Call them on the phone, write them a letter, uh, create a plan to uh, uh, pay that bill off over a period of time. And that's what needs to be done by each individual. It's, it's not a quick fix. It's something that you have to work at. 
Now, you, uh, this, you, is it tough love sometimes that you got to be brutally honest with people and say, you know what, you really you, you messed up and now we, we can help you. How long typically does it take for you to repair someone's credit to where they can qualify for a mortgage? Well, typically, <clears throat> you, uh, it depends on what, how much debt they're in, the amount of money that they owe. And it also depends on how much money we can encourage them to save out of what they are earning. A lot of times, if they owe uh, $2,000, they have $2,000 in debt, and if their income is not a really extraordinary income, we have to start finding a way that they can save a little bit of money every week, uh, put it in their savings account, uh, and we'll get a letter of agreement from the creditor, and we'll start making a payment either a lump sum or either so much per week or per month to, to be amortize that debt. And at that point, we can get a letter written by the creditor or the credit reporting agency, uh, put in their record, and that will, in about 60 days, it will increase their credit score and go up from where it was previously. Now, and when you see people that come in, are, do they have, you, I mentioned in your brochures that you provide computer training mm -hmm. as well. Is that, a, is that a problem for some people that, that don't, just for whatever reason, never got the training and, and need it because that's pretty much how the world runs now. Yes. Right. We have more senior citizens come in for the computer class. Mm -hmm. um, most of the young people, they know computer pretty well, but the senior citizens, they don't really know that much about the computer. And so we really focus a lot on them. A lot of them just want to be able to communicate with their uh, grandchildren. Um, some of them found out that even going to the doctor, you know, you have to use the computer to sign in and, and that kind of thing. So we really just kind of work with them with the basics mm -hmm. on the computer, knowing how to turn it on, knowing how to, you know, email. do an email, do, um, you know, some banking, of them get on Facebook. The web. Banking, yeah. some of them will the do web. banking, but most of the senior citizens kind of leery of banking <laughs> on, online. They don't really enjoy that. They want to they 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 go to the bank. Cash yes. in their hand and, yes. and yes. go to the store and spend. Yes. You know. yes. Yeah, I know that sometimes, and, in ba and the bankers want you to go into the all online. Yes, right. it's less automated. People, yeah. It's less people that have to deal with, with customers. So right. uh, let's talk about uh, actual homes that you've helped people get into. Now, we've got a, a duplex that uh, you, yes. and I think we've got some video of, of this um, duplex that was, that was purchased by the CDC? Yes, yes, we developed it. Okay, here's here's the ribbon cutting. Uh, and this is a duplex mm -hmm. located? On the corner of Patterson and Denver. Denver Street. Okay, and this is a duplex apartment? Yes. Uh -huh. Three bed. It's a three bedroom, two bath on each side. Uh, we developed this uh, responding to the demand for housing and affordable housing in the community. We partnered with um, um, the CRA uh, from the city they had, had a great influence on this. They helped us with this as well. And we borrowed the money from uh, People's State Bank. Uh, and they were a well, great, uh, great help towards development of this property here in the community. And, and so you, this is rented yes. to individuals <clears throat> um, to... We've got a local family that uh, was staying in substandard housing uh, they rent it one side, and we have an uh, individual that moved here uh, from Alabama that also employed at HACO, and he, when he came into the community, he was looking for housing, and um, uh, he had an opportunity to view our property, which is a brand new one, and he decided he wanted to rent. So, you know, there's a shortage of housing here in Columbia County, and with the population growth, and the expansion to businesses and, and the new business being constructed currently, uh, we're going to need more housing. So, this now, are is you are you looking to do another one, another uh, rental or a house or what? Yes. What is the organization? <clears throat> well, the organization decided that uh, just doing the, the the duplexes will still leave a shortage as far as housing is concerned because it's just a band-aid on the problem. So we decided to do a 56 unit multifamily affordable housing. Uh, complex here in the community. And it, wh where is that now? Where is that? Is that just in the planning stages at this point? Well, or? yeah, we are doing our due diligence. We are looking, uh, we are communicating with um, the people that's going to be involved, which is 
We're looking to the city for assistance. We are looking for, to Columbia County for assistance, to HUD and to the state of Florida for funding to, uh, to be of this uh, 56 unit department. Um, now, now, when you do this 56 unit uh, <coughs> apartment, uh, a lot of the rent will go to pay the mortgage that, Certainly. that you take out. Mm -hmm. Could the organization actually use some of the income to be more self-sufficient? Yeah. Certainly, uh, where we have the bottleneck for affordable housing for a family, for private owners with the bank and the problem that we have with the credit, get them qualified. We could have built five or six houses probably last year, but for the financing. And since the bank would, would not issue a mortgage to individuals with credit problems, uh, having the revenue of our own would give us an opportunity to finance some of these units ourselves. I'm not saying we're gonna be, uh, be four, five, or maybe one, to a year, we can certainly finance uh, private individuals. Now, are you, uh, during the year, I know we, we showed the du duplex, um, are you helping people get in, a, in existing housing now? Yes. A yeah. And after <clears throat> they go through the credit counseling and, and so they're, they're, they get, you help them get qualified for, yeah, for well, a loan? Mm -hmm. Once we get them to pull their credit, uh, find out where they are and what they need to do, then that's, that's where we start working with them. We find out what the need is, and we start working with them individually to uh, uh, raise their credit scores so they can rent. A lot, a lot of times you go to rent a unit now, uh, they pull your credit, and if it's out of a certain standard or a cert certain uh, number, it's hard to rent a place. So by us counseling with them, going over that the Money Smart training that we put them through individually, uh, and uh, working with them on a budget, a consistent budget, we encourage them to set up a savings account that they, they uh, contribute to every month or every week according to how they get paid. And this will assist them in whatever they want to do. Whether they want to buy a pre-existing home, or whether they want to rent, or whether they want to build brand new, uh, what we do will help them in that process. It seems like, uh, and, and you might speak to this, uh, at some point we stop saving uh, our, <laughs> our, our, I don't know, culture or the, the, we just don't save anymore. We spend everything right. we get. We How difficult is it to convince people that may have not, never saved any money that it's important to have this as an asset for your household? Well, what I do is I try to show them uh, using, a, I guess you say, elementary terms. We take and, and just let them know, said, okay, you're, you have X number of dollars, and let's break this X number of dollars in so many directions. Let's see how far it can go. And when they find out that they're spending unnecessarily, then we say, okay, we're going to put this aside. We're not going to spend this. We're going to do something different, you know. So if you're buying hamburger meat, why go to McDonald's? You know, when you could cook the hamburger that you have already bought, take that money that you were going to go to McDonald's with and put it aside. Well, even and tracking. You, you make a good point with hamburgers, but what about soda? Same How many thing. sodas do, do people drink? Yeah. That I know that when the United Way uh, was doing their campaign, <laughs> they would say, don't buy it. One soda a day is all we ask, and mm. you would be contributing yes. over $500. Yeah. to right. the United Way. Same thing with the savings account. That's it. It all adds up. Yeah, it yeah. adds up. <clears throat> we are. Uh, one of our, our procedures or policies is to have a client track their spending over a 30 day period. Yeah. You write down everything that you spend, every time that you spend money, document what you spent, uh, what you purchased, and at the end of the month, you'll come in and bring that list in, and we'll sit down with them and go over what it is that they spent their money on. Uh, I call it, you know, if you're not if you're not consistently saving, I call it having holes in your pocket. If you got holes in your pocket, it's because of the habits that you formed, your spending habits. So we go over it and we look at it and together and let them decide what could they cut back on, what can they save money. We don't want to uh, impose that on them, but if they want to become homeowners, or want to be responsible or pay off the debt, then they need to identify where they can save dollars that, out of that budget. Well, you're uh, doing something on the 25th this weekend. Uh, it's the 12th annual Black Tie Affair. 
uh, Dinner Under the Stars. Uh, yes. I, you've done 12 of them. This is the 12th one. Yes, it is. Talk about uh, what, what people can expect uh, at the, at the mm -hmm. Black Tie Affair at the fairgrounds. Well, it's an evening of elegance, um, music, uh, dancing, uh, delicious dinner. Our caterer is um, Kelly's Old School. Um, we have our, a young lady that sings. Mm -hmm. She's done backup singing for professional artists. She will be with us um, doing dinner. Um, it's almost like jazz music. She'll be doing some of that, a variety of a music. Supper club. Um, it has the supper club um, theme to it, and we just want everybody to come out and, and enjoy a, lot, a relaxing evening with us. Um, the annual banquet actually keeps our programs up and going because yeah. we don't charge people for the services that we render, the, but this banquet gives us the opportunity to um, recoup from some of the programs that we put out. Um, our newest program we've implemented is the um, Young Women of Excellence. Uh, it's a mentoring program with young ladies from um, high school, ninth through 12th and beyond. We teach them about etiquette, um, life skills, and we work diligently with them, and we help award scholarships for them. Um, take them on tours to different colleges. So the, the banquet is not just something that we do just to be doing it, but it's because we want to let the community get involved in helping support the programs that we offer. And I noticed that you've got uh, some sponsors. I know you wanted to mention uh, Lake City Medical Center and Walmart mm -hmm. Transportation. Lester, I, I guess you wouldn't be able to do this without having some upfront money to yes. be able to get the, the dinners paid right. for and, exactly. and the commitment. Right. Community support is very important to what we do. Uh, we are not funded by the government, so uh, we need the community support to be able to do computer training. Our instructor uh, is a volunteer instructor that, the, to provide our computer training. Unless we get a good cons uh, const uh, instructor, uh, we can't host that uh, computer training for our senior citizens. We don't charge for the facility, uh, uh, the utilities and everything. So all we need is a good instructor to come out and also to help us pay, it costs money to do anything nowadays. Oh, you so, got a phone, you yeah, got yeah, uh, we got computers, internet, you, you got know, uh, and we, we need to be able to pay those bills throughout the year uh, or to keep us afloat or keep us uh, doing, to help us do what we do. And we appreciate the support we get from the uh, local community. Uh, this community, this nonprofit, could not exist without our supporters. Well, and I'm reading your list of uh, board members. You, Alonzo Galloway is your president. Uh, yes. Cappy Perry. Uh, Secretary. Chris Dampier, mm -hmm. Betty Powell, Glenn mm -hmm. Perry, Wanda Allen. And I, w I wanted to mention some of the table sponsors that you've got. Th these are individuals that have yes. purchased tables mm -hmm. that Willie B. and Oni Allen Yes. And it's, it's fun. You got Ron and Gwen Williams right underneath that. It's kind of, yes. they've had a battle for county commission and uh, they're, they've good come together. Competition they've always. come together for, for a good cause. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and I, again, uh, appreciate what you do for our community. Uh, and I think if more people knew about your services, they would take advantage of it and could have the dream of owning a house. Uh, yes. Uh, but I guess the one thing that you really need people to know is. Don't mess up your credit score. Exactly. Right. And, and, and yeah. everything goes from there. If you'd like more information about making a contribution to the greater CDC here in Lake City, uh, or if you'd like ticket information for the dinner under the stars on February 25th at the fairgrounds, the number is 752-9785. But m more important, if you can't make it, please make a donation to the Greater Lake City CDC um, because they do really, really good work for our community. And uh, this is, again, the largest fundraiser that they have. And we appreciate you both for what you do for our community, but for coming on and, and sharing what you do with our community as well. We thank you, Mike. We'd we like to thank um, Florida Gateway College for allowing us to this opportunity to, to get us. the word out. We, and Mike, we appreciate you. Hopefully you'll invite us and we'll have some more video to shoot of yes. another ribbon cutting at some other uh, event or maybe a homeowner that is, is making a first mortgage payment on a brand new home or, or yeah. an existing home. But uh, well, we, you'll be we, there for that 56 unit groundbreaking. There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, and a thank you for watching Perspective here on Florida Gateway College Television. Until next time, I'm Mike McKee. Make a contribution. We'll see you soon.